Welcome to Sterling High School. I'm Jared Claiborne, joined by Pete Marley's and Rob Strauss, and we are bringing you the Varsity Awards Show. This Varsity Awards Show will take part in four episodes, which we will record with different uh, coaches to honor our 2019 and 2020 season, and specifically the class of 2020. So this show is uh, traditionally a Varsity award show, um, so it's not necessarily just seniors, but any Varsity award winner or any other athlete that felt like we needed to uh, bring recognition to. So thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Um, so tell me a little bit about the history of this program. You guys are both are tenured teacher here, uh, and we've been transitioning through this program. Uh, so what's, what, what do you remember in the past that we've done? I think one of the things that I remember the most was the, the coaches would come up and review their season, a uh, real short little 30 second piece uh, because sometimes even at a couple months after your season's over, you tend to forget things and it's nice to reflect back on that. Um, and we changed it a couple years back with the, with the ESPYs kind of feel to it and um, which was a nice, nice little feel to it. Uh, but it was, it's, it's great, it's great to reflect back on the athletes, student athletes and all that they've accomplished from September through June, and I don't, Pete. I don't know if it's it was different back when you were here, yeah. but well, it, I guess in, in my 12 years as the coach, it, this initially began seasonal. So we would have a fall awards, then a winter, then a spring, and then one of the changes we made was so let's do it all together into one. And then recently, just two years ago, we switched it, like you said, to the ESPYs, more of a show. And we felt like this was a fitting um, show for this year to do it in this format. Yeah, great. One of the best things for me is just that all the coaches have been able to have input into the dynamic of the show. And of course, all of the awards that get done by and recognized by the school are nominated by the coaches and selected by the coaches. So I just wanted to throw a little caveat in there. This is not like the end of the season banquet that teams might have. Some teams still do that, but this is just the way that the school as a whole, a whole body in the athletic department recognizes our programs and our athletes throughout the season. So this is episode one, and this is the fall, so why don't we get to it? We're going to start highlighting some of the teams from the fall, um, their records, all-stars. And so I think we are up first with football. Football is up first. Football, uh, football finishing 3-7 and seven overall on the season uh, and playing in, in a very, very tough Colonial Conference in the West Jersey Football League. And, and Coach, you can attest to this as a former uh, football coach that – it, it's really, really competitive. You've got your Haddonfield, your West Efforts in there. Um, you also had Paulsboro, and it, it's very, very competitive in that division. They had played against four teams that were in sectional finals and or won the sectional final um, of the teams advancing on to what was, became the bowl games for the year. Uh, very, very competitive. What I, what I like the most about the team is I felt like they remained competitive throughout the year and that they continued to improve. You could see the stages of improvement uh, from the, through the coaches to the players on the field. Um, so, you know, the record is not what they would want, but I think that uh, they accomplished much in that year, especially with a lot of youngsters contributing. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's a common theme with a lot of our sports that in our division and in our conference, or even in the case of uh, volleyball in their conference, there's a lot of tough competition, and that's not to make an excuse for records. It's just to acknowledge the fact that um, our schedules are difficult, uh, you know, and, and, and teams are really competing against some of the best in South Jersey in, in football. That's, that's very true, too. And football opened up winning two of their first three games. Uh, the opener against Triton in a uh, revenge kind of uh, game, a very competitive game a couple years ago, and then Triton came here. Sterling beating them 35-6. to Tough loss on the road at Haddonfield, 19-6. to And that's always a, an interesting game. We get to cover those year in and year out. And those are always really good games. Fought hard against uh, Haddon Heights, beat Haddon Heights, and then they had their tough stretch that we mentioned earlier, the West efforts of Paulsboro, and then a three-game road trip uh, at Deptford, at Willingboro, at Overbrook, in which they wound up beating Overbrook 28-6 to to end up that three-game uh, road trip. So, Coach, a good way to end that at the very, very end. Yeah, very much so, and uh, they got a lot to work for. You know, they got a nice young quarterback that's going to return, and, uh, you know, the schedule – changes again for next year in the West Jersey Football League. It's going to continue to be uh, difficult, uh, their schedule, so they have a upward battle, but it's something that uh, coach and the team is ready to handle. 
Yeah, they ended their season with a, a loss to West Effort in the uh, quarterfinal round of South Jersey Group 2. Uh, but again, as you mentioned, looking forward to a, a real a different schedule next year, which is always fun. Coach, are there any uh, different teams that we're going to see uh, for next year? Well, we have, I believe we still get Willingboro. I think we bring Paulsboro back. We didn't play Paulsboro. I think Paul. We, we played, we had, we played Paulsboro. We had Paulsboro here. Yeah, yeah so the, yeah, those the heavy meat of Paulsboro, Willingboro, Haddonfield, West Stepford is still there. Oh, we add Del Ran, who has been an up, up and coming program as well. So yeah, the, the schedule will remain tough, but uh, you know, listen, they, the road to the championship goes through some of those places. We always like to say through uh, Woolwork Road and uh, Sterling High School, and that's what they'll have to do. And we also had some players that we want to mention uh, that received some accolades uh, through the West Jersey Football League. Uh, Dylan Jess, first team offensive line. Uh, Larry Williams, first team offensive running back, uh, as well as Jason Schulz, who played a little bit of tight end and a little bit of wide receiver as well. Uh, Stefan Johnson, uh, first team defensive line. Mike Estramera, first team defensive back. We called his name quite a bit during the season as a wide receiver and had a great uh, connection with our quarterback, Jeremiah Thompson. And he winds up getting first team defensive back and not to be outdone in Jeremiah Thompson, second team uh, as well for, for him at quarterback. So, again, talk a little bit about those players and the impact that they had and them being so young coming back next year. Yeah, great players coming back. And uh, so that's something to build off of as a staff and as a program, uh, not to take away from those seniors that have invested in this program and really given a lot to, to make it. You know, every year is a stepping stone. Um, going forward and coach uh, Harris does a great job of recognizing and rewarding individual effort from uh, whether they're contributing in the weight room or you know in the community with the things that they're doing and then on the field. So congratulations to all of those football players on a great season uh, and good luck to the graduating seniors. Now it'd be weird to have a football game and not have cheerleaders and so the cheerleaders have done such a great job over the past several years in working with the the band and the fans and the, the players really do get energized from it pete and you get you got a chance to see this from the stands uh tell us a little about the cheerleading program this year yeah so like you said i think the first thing that that stands out is their support of the team and the way that they've been able to incorporate both the band and the fans we talked about the fourth quarter and some of the traditions that they've created recently which i think are fantastic um, on top of that what was unique about the cheerleading team this year and i think really special was they had the opportunity to go to Rutgers, New Brunswick and participate uh, during a halftime show in a game versus the University of Maryland. And I think anytime you're able to get our students off campus to show them um, different experiences, in this case, uh, college athletics, I think, you know, big, big shout out to Coach Jordan for, for taking your girls there. I'm sure they had an amazing experience performing there in front of thousands of people. You know, it was really cool. And they got a chance to shine in the community as well. Uh, working to clean up the community, which a lot of teams did this year, in cleaning up. I think it was Stratford or one mm -hmm. of the one of the sending districts as well. Yeah, really cool. And 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 seniors Rachel Kirk, Paige Anderson, Inu Uda, and Tori Stein. You know, Coach Johnson and, and talking to her. I'm sorry, Coach Jordan and talking to her. She she you know mentioned the leadership that those four had and and what they've. Uh, brought to the program and their commitment. So four special seniors graduating and um, they're going to be missed. And they definitely bring the energy to the football games for sure. And also basketball games, uh, which I'm sure you'll hear from the, the winter cheerleading squad a little bit later on in the program. But uh, coach, the, the, the cheerleading team, talk about the evolution of the cheerleading team over the years and how they built that that program to, to interact with the van like what Coach Marley said. Yeah, so there's lots of different uh, elements uh, that are at the heart of the cheerleader, right? They really want to compete. Um, and so we've been working with through that process on when we might be able to have a competition team. Uh, and then there's also just that, that old school traditional cheering at a game. Um, and then they worked really hard to, to work with uh, Mr. Young and, uh, you know, Miss Jordan and the, and the fans. And I think that the fan element this year was raised the bar again, you know, and a shout out to those students that are, were involved in the, the super fans uh, and, and what they were able to do. I really loved their themes that they brought this year. With, uh, they had the school color day, they had a, the neon day, we went with the American flag day. 
uh, what a great feel. And then you started to see some of the other schools, I think, picking up. You know, there's different schools that do it. Yeah. And I felt like we were, we were leading in some of that, and that was great. And it really takes everybody, including the cheer, to be yeah, involved. Yeah, shout in. out Nick Anderson leading the uh, senior super fans this year. They were fantastic. Yeah, it's a great job. And we got a chance to see that also from the broadcast booth, broadcasting all the football games. And I think the players definitely feed off that energy. And you've seen it on your end with the soccer field with all the super fans coming out to your games makes a huge impact and gives that put the players a little extra rush. Absolutely, the players always appreciate it. And it's really just, it's part of the community feel that we're trying to build here. You know, it's not just about the, uh, the athletes on the field. It's, it's, a, it's a total community effort um, in, in all aspects of, of the school. All right, coach. We gotta go on to boys soccer. We're thrilled to have coach uh, Marley's here with us, um, boys soccer. Again, with uh, they're coming off of a great season last year. We went through uh, a, a good season this year as well. Um, one of the things that just stands out to me, and I don't want to get jump ahead on you, is just missing Simon on the for the most part of the season. Um, he has been great to watch him grow. I had a pleasure of being with him at Somerdale Park School before he came here. I certainly missed him, uh, but a great year with uh, Mike Sowers as your goalie. So I'll let you go ahead and go with it. Well, I think you hit on on. Two of the seniors that really stood out for us this year. We had come off a colonial championship in which we graduated um, 12 seniors. So, you know, on paper, people I, I assume would have looked at us as a rebuilding year. We also had the lowest number of seniors I've, I think I've had in, in my 12 years as a coach. We had six seniors, um, but each one of those six seniors brought something different to the team in terms of leadership. You know, whether it was um, the last guy off the bench who showed up every day put the hard hat on, went to work, and, and just led from that aspect to, you know, asking, um, you, you know, you to lead us in the attack or whatever it may be. The seniors um, this year in this particular team were outstanding, and I think that's a large part of the reason why we were, again, it came down to the last game of the year between us and Haddonfield where we had an opportunity to win the conference. Um, for a young team, that was a pretty big accomplishment. Unfortunately, uh, we had them here. We needed the win to win outright. We ended up tying, which created a, a tiebreaker, and Haddonfield went on to, to win their last game, and they ended up a, uh, a half a game ahead of us for the, the conference championship again. But, you know, talking about championships running through Warwick Road, we've now established that we're every year in a Colonial Liberty, you know, um, we're going to be in that conversation. So you know, I'm proud of that, and, and a lot of credit to the seniors for keeping that tradition alive. And Coach, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I believe you guys had a, a, a goal in the beginning of the second half against Haddonfield, an electric game, and we did that game right on here on Channel 19. Um, and then Haddonfield scored late, yeah. and then they just kind of let the tie uh, because they they understood the circumstances as well with that. How did the how did the players take that? Um, it was, you know, it was a letdown um, in, in a sense that we, we knew we had an opportunity to, to win it at that moment. Um, but, you know, the boys stuck together and, and fought for 80 minutes plus the 20 of overtime. Um, you know, and I was, I was proud of their effort. A lot of credit to Haddonfield in that situation. They, they won the game prior in overtime they, uh, against a tough West effort team. They then came here. And, and took us to overtime scoring late, and then they went and beat Haddon Heights. Um, so credit to them. They, they made a lot of plays, and, and you know, um, at the end of the day, uh, we were proud of the effort we gave. We just fell a little short. Coach? It was, it was a great experience being at that game. Yeah. Uh, again, that we had a lot of super vans that were able to come and join. I think some of the other teams were able to join the sideline that day. And, uh, you know, obviously it didn't go all the way, but it was a great experience to be a, a high school fan for sure. Yeah, a lot of, lot of lessons learned in that situation. You know, our guys, you know, they, they grew from that. And, um, you know, again, I think the seniors carried on a tradition that, and a culture that we've been building. So i um, proud of those guys. And Coach, you had some uh, four players that got some, some conference honors. Uh, tell us a little about those four players. Yeah, Bruce Williams, Alex Linnaeus, Mike Sowers, Tandrew Sivery, all, um, all first team, all conference, and, uh, you know, deserving. Um, in the case of Mike Sowers, he was voted as um, the leading vote getter for, for goalies, and, and same with Bruce Williams, considered the um, leading vote getter or, or best striker uh, in our division. So 
um, congratulations to those guys. Gentlemen, we're talking about girls soccer next uh, after a great boys season. Tell us about uh, the girls soccer team, Coach. The girls soccer team, in reflecting on the year, really young team who, um, like most young teams, took a little bit to get going. But, you know, credit, credit to the team as the year went on. They really started to improve. Um, again, we mentioned earlier about tough competition, and girls' soccer is no different. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about um, some of the best group one and group two schools in South Jersey are in the conference, and, and they're seeing tough, you know, really tough competition every day. Um, certainly led by a four-year starter in goal, Lexis Lambertino who is um, a standout here on the field and off in, in, in the school, someone who we're really going to miss. Um, 500 career saves, uh, which is a huge accomplishment. And, uh, you know, I think for a young team, it's really important to have some leadership like that, and she definitely provided that. Yeah, real tough loss for them, uh, Coach, in the first round of the South Jersey Group 2 playoffs. We got a chance to go down to Cedar Creek and cover that game. Back and forth game. Uh, Sterling wound up losing 3-2 in penalty kicks. Alexi Lambertino actually got her hands on that last one and just, just kind of squeaked in. But that was one of the most entertaining soccer games I think I've ever seen at the playoff level. Really unbelievable. Yeah, I think in, in, in remembering, if I remember correctly, um, all of our, our shooters that stepped up, which you know I can attest to how difficult that is and how much pressure is on you, um, all of our shooters were, were freshmen and sophomore that stepped up and – and uh, you know, put the team on their back, and you know, again, um, fell a little bit short, but but a lot to build on. Uh, I think overall, the way they improved this year is, is something to be proud of. And moving forward, you know, it's an exciting group of girls. All right, and Coach uh, Gab Palladino, a sophomore, talk about the, the the youth of this team. Led the team with eight goals, and, and tell us a little about some of the uh, All Conference uh, nominations. Yeah, so great youth on on the team with both sophomores and freshmen, Kaylee Sheehan. Uh, being uh, one of the standout players that I think we're going to talk about uh, for a long time here at Sterling High School. But girls soccer had uh, two all-stars with uh, Lexi Lambertino being second team in the goal. Uh, very, very exciting and certainly we'll miss her again with her 500 career saves. And then Kaylee Sheehan uh, being second team midfield. Um, but really exciting to see how the, the team definitely improved throughout the season as they began to identify themselves and find their gel and uh, something certainly to look forward to. And, and Lexi Lambertino is playing at the next level as well. I um, want to shout that out. Anytime a Sterling athlete is moving on and continuing to play, it's a big accomplishment and she'll be playing in college. So um, congrats to her. Very good. All right, so moving on, uh, Coach Strauss, to tennis. Yeah, tennis uh, coming off of two back-to-back uh, -to -back double digit win seasons. Uh, graduated five of seven. Uh, this past season. Uh, so it was a, a chance for the, the younger players to step up that have been working hard to try to get into that varsity role uh, and shine a little bit. Um, Jada Disley, who played third singles in 2018, uh, stepped up and wound up playing first singles in 2019. We'll get it to, to her in a little bit about how difficult it is to play at that level. Uh, Sarah Campbell and Alicia Thornton, who were both uh, juniors this year, uh, were doubles team just a year ago, wound up playing second and third singles respectively. And then four JV players were vaulted into the double, the two doubles teams roles. Uh, so everybody had a different position to play. And it's a big, big jump going from that, uh, that JV level to that varsity level. Uh, and it's, it's, I can't tell you how big that is. And, and we had the first uh, doubles team of Rebecca Kaufman and Alyssa Coleman, and then the second doubles team of Eden Shinseki and Marlies Frazier. And we also sprinkled in some JV players uh, in there as well. So they got some experience. And again, young team, future's gonna look really, really bright. We graduate one senior this year in Alyssa Coleman. And I wanna give also a shout out to uh, our two other seniors, Zainab Eminent and Ireland Kent, who are also graduating this year as well. But, and they've been phenomenal role, role models and uh, just leaders for the younger players and carrying on the, tra the tradition of Sterling tennis. But you talk about youth in a team, uh, Pete, it's, it's bringing back a lot of players next year in this, in this girls' tennis team. Yeah, it's got to be exciting for you. Yeah, it really is. Uh, outstanding performer. I mean, Jada Disley, uh, I want to give her a, a big shout-out. She's playing number one singles. is kind of a, a blessing and a curse at the same time. You are playing the best player from every single team, but you can also say, that you played, that you're the best player in the school. 
Sure. And that, that's, that's, that's kind of a, a nice little accolade to have. Coach, your program is always fun to be around. The, the girls are always thrilled and excited about their sport and participating in it. You do often uh, some different activities, um, whether it's uh, with uh, Highland, we've done our scrimmage and that's been a thing. I uh, really enjoy when you bring back uh, some when the students get to select somebody that's made an impact to them and you invite them to the to the the match that day and it, that's really a special moment for both the students and the people that are invited so there's great traditions you're building around that program that continue to attract yeah and I think it's it's a lot of fun for the for the team as well it's a good team bonding experience they we brought back uh, we call it our teacher appreciation match and we also do a parent match where the parents can pair up with their their daughter and play a doubles match we kind of put a ladder together but I think the teacher appreciation match is great because we've seen teachers not only from Sterling but also from Somerdale Park and all the sending schools and everything so it's it's a nice it's a nice thing to do we do a um, a team fun match with Audubon and I want to shout out coach Bouch from Audubon we started this just to have fun playing the, the, the sport of tennis and just enjoying it so we play our match business first and then we order a bunch of pizzas and have some fun afterwards. So it's, it's just something nice. It breaks up the, the seriousness of, of the match a little bit and have some fun. That's really, you know, at times you kind of need that break a little bit. So, uh, but we're really looking forward to next year and, and the, the challenge of, of getting these younger players better and getting them ready for the next level. Very good, very good. All right, so that puts us into our next sport, uh, cross country, I think. Um, yeah, cross country. So Mr. Strauss, yeah, as a runner, I know you have um, a little bit of insight of what it takes to be a cross-country runner. Uh, so tell us about that. Uh, running is it's definitely, it, obviously, physical, very, very physical, uh, but it's also a lot of mental uh, aspects of it as well. When do you, you don't want to go out too fast, and how do you pace yourself? Um, and Coach Baines has done such a phenomenal job with this cross-country team. Um, had two people who we're going to mention who wound up getting second team all-conference, uh, but they had if you combine the boys and the girls season, they had a 500 record. And there's been a really, really strong tradition of running, running here at Sterling. And some, some newcomers like Riley Mansfield uh, have really, really um, helped carry on that tradition. And running's not easy. Uh, you're talking about a 3.1 mile course and you're trying to do it as fast as humanly possible. And, and some people, it's kind of a love-hate relationship with running. Some people either love to do it or you can't stand it. And um, I'm one of those people that absolutely loves to run. And there's just something about it that just, it, it's awesome. And these kids do such a great job. They've got great numbers out there, coach. And um, you know, some of these courses are not easy. Yeah, I'd like to point out just that, you know, this is Coach Bain's first year taking over our program. He's, he's, this is his second year at the school. He brought a great history of coaching experience from where he was previously, jumped right in with uh, our coaches, with Coach McElvange, Coach Shep. Um, they just do a phenomenal job monitoring the year-round athlete. So they're never just training for one thing. They always have that, that whole goal in mind. And uh, Coach Baines fit right into that, uh, develop relationships with students um, right away. And that's always a huge factor that we want to have at Sterling, just the relationships with students that the coaches might have. And he's done a great job with that. Some great names here, though, of some of the athletes that uh, – that did well. Yeah, uh, coach wanted us to shout out Tyler Criswell, who was a medalist at the Camden County All-Star Meet, uh, finished 21st at sectionals. Alex Brown, he said, was his most consistent runner all season. Had was probably one of the hardest working members of the team from summer till the end of the season. And Cole Doms and Greg Santilli uh, wanted to shout them out. And as you can see on the screen there, Sierra James and Riley Mansfield, who we mentioned earlier, second team uh, all-conference. Uh, accolades for them and Paige Jewell uh, also did not get any accolades in terms of the all-conference but was a medalist at the Camden County All-Star Meet uh, with a 21:46. so a that pretty that's you're talking about around a seven minute mile or so uh, that's it's pretty impressive <laughs> pretty impressive it's at one point in my life <laughs> long long time ago um, so but that, that girls team the girls cross country team I think seven to three on a year really impressive um, build and and like you mentioned with coach Baines I think uh, you talk about um, people to keep an eye on or coaches to keep an eye on. Uh, a lot of respect for what Coach Baines is doing, taking over for Coach Bloomstein, who built such a really um, strong cross-country team. You know, I just know the numbers have gone up, and Coach Baines is a lot of respect for him and the work he's doing. Um, I think that the, both of those programs are in really good hands with him. 
and every member of the team set a, ber a personal best and at the Camden County All-Star Meet on October 24th. And that is just a testament of how much work he puts in and how you pace yourself over the course and you build yourself up for that last meet of the season. And if you're hitting your, your personal best at the end of the season, you know you've, you've done it right. And uh, so shout out to Coach Baines and the boys and the girls that did such a phenomenal job of running and competing meet in and meet out um, every single time that they got out there on the on the course so yeah uh, great job by them coach um, you? speaking of coaches who are doing a really good job coach Eric with the field hockey team um, someone who I have a lot of respect for and in, in, in uh, what she's establishing there with the field hockey team and you know we've talked about tough competition right um, and that it doesn't your record doesn't always reflect your success I think they're they're a great example of that so if you look at their record um, you, you may not think they had a successful year yet that's the team that went the furthest in the playoffs, right? So they were, they were tested, um, they were challenged, and then, you know, once they got into the playoffs and they, they got outside, Road Warriors, they started upsetting teams and made it to the semifinals of South Jersey, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, credit to, to those seniors, credit to, to the coaching staff, um, but I think the field hockey team has a lot to be proud of uh, in upsetting um, two two teams, or I think the first, the first one was at home, the second one they went on the road, made it to the semifinals, and then, you know, went to that semifinal match and, and proved themselves, and, um, you know, again, really strong program that I think uh, is, is got a lot to be excited about. I think it was Lower Cape May. I think they had to go all the way down to Lower Cape May, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly, Coach. Yep. Uh, lost a tough one down there, but getting that far in the tournament, not only is it, a testament to Coach Everett and the rest of her staff and, and the players, but now you're starting to put Sterling Field Hockey, who is consistently getting to those second, third rounds in the playoffs, starting to put them on the map a little bit. And a couple players that, that we wanted to shout out, Sienna Torrey, um, started as attacker her freshman year and then made the switch to a defender and had spent two years on varsity. And Liv Williams, who uh, we, we mentioned as one of the best all-around athletes probably here at the school, um, second team all-conference honors for her coach. The season, again, you saw the team progress very good. And I just wanted to point out Coach Waters uh, with Liv Williams. Liv clearly was uh, a dominant figure on the field, but she went through some injury. And Coach intentionally sat her out in games to help her heal. And then as they went into that playoff run, uh, that healing had completed. And, and Liv just, she really went off and really helped drive that team to doing a great job and, and making it again raising the bar that she continues to do with that team coach water so yeah. exciting time and pete that's a tough decision to make as a coach uh sitting your arguably your best one of your best players out to heal and to get ready yeah. and you as a coach i'm sure that's you've been in that situation probably with some of your soccer players as well do you sit them do you play them you want to win but are you gearing up for a playoff run yeah so um you know, it, it's, it is, but it isn't a tough decision, right? It's a tough decision because the kid wants to be out there. Right. Um, but you always have to err on the side of, of safety for that athlete and doing what's best for the team. And she, I think she made the right call. And it's just great to see those seniors and, and, and CC Torrey and, and Liv Williams um, get to the point their senior year um, that they've been working towards. So um, great effort by, by all the girls in the field hockey program. Uh, making a quick transition now, Coach, to the girls' volleyball team. Uh, it's finished 15-9 and nine on the year. Head coach Bill Scully uh, doing a fantastic job with the girls' volleyball team. Um, tell us a little bit about what they had on the one of the only, probably I think the only indoor uh, facility here in the fall. Yeah, they, that program is traditionally very strong and continues to do so. I think that they may have finished a little bit earlier than what they had desired, but you could see them, again, build throughout the year. Uh, great leadership with, um, uh, of seniors with Diamond, with uh, Latanya Barry, um, and I'm, I know I'm missing some names there but uh, that you'll help me with, but what I liked with Coach Scully is he continued to progress that team along and their competition level, speaking of which, is extremely high. When you're traditionally a good team, uh, other teams want to play you, right? And uh, that helps build their seed and preparation for the playoffs. Um, so they have a, the highest level of schedule that you possibly could have. Yeah, they're, they're playing against the Morristowns, the RVs, the bigger schools. 
Um, they're being invited to the best tournaments. Correct. Right. So um, that's a credit to that program and what they've been able to establish over the past decade, really. So. Yeah. And they were they qualified for the playoffs as in group two as an 18 seed. Now you're looking at an 18 seed and you're like, okay. But volleyball is grouped a little bit differently where it's statewide as opposed to sectionally where we're used to with soccer and with tennis and other sports where you only have 16 teams. So now you're talking about a much wider field. Huge field, traveling all over the place. Tough to get quality film on them and really break them down. Uh, you just got to go in and play in your best game. And, uh, you know, it was fun to watch the, see the, the girls' volleyball. One of the things that's always attractive about their sport is just the amount of cheering and com camaraderie that you get to see right on the court throughout the, throughout the game, and these girls were, were great at that. And they had three players uh, named to the all-conference all-star game in Diamond Free, Ashley Kinnearney and Savannah Boyce, and one player in Diamond Free chosen to play in the state statewide all-senior game, which is a, a huge, huge accolade for, for Diamond Free. So congratulations to her. And, Coach, you got a couple uh, conference honors as well. Yeah, we have two first-teamers with Savannah Boyce and Ashley, uh, both receiving first team, and then Diamond Free uh, receiving second team as an outside hitter. Uh, excellent uh, participants in the girls volleyball program. So yeah. kudos to Coach Scully and the rest of the girls on a fantastic season. Again, finishing 15-9 uh, and third in their Burlington County Scholastic League Patriot Division. That's a lot to say. Very <laughs> much so. So uh, those are our false teams. And one of the things that has always been a tradition, the Board of Education likes to recognize and honor uh, the teams and the players from the team. And so they approach all of the coaches and the coaches get to select one or two student athletes that might be their outstanding performers or, uh, and it, it, you know, different teams use it different ways, but each coach get to select two from their team, one or two, depending on the program. So we wanted to make a recognition of that at this time. So we have, uh, if you guys will help me, uh, football, we'll start with them. Yeah, football, uh, Jason Schules and Brandon Grace will receive the uh, athletic awards for, for that. Coach, you want to take your, your soccer guys? Sure, boys soccer, Alex Linnaeus and Mike Sowers, two seniors, two, um, you know, two, two players who've, who've been through it with us, um, three are varsity players who've just done a lot for the program. Awesome, and girls soccer, we see Lexi Lambertino, again, we've talked about hugely, and then a, another senior that had an impact throughout the year, Natalie Hatfield, earning that outstanding performer for girls soccer. For uh, cross country, Tyler Criswell and Sierra James. Field hockey, we got Liv Williams. Livia Williams just making dynamic impact in that program. Volleyball, we have Diamond Free and Naja Satchel. One thing about Naja Satchel, we didn't mention her when we talked about volleyball. This is an athlete who um, did not make the volleyball team as a junior and is now going to be playing in college, which is just, you know, I can't stress how enough, enough how, how impressive that is that she put the work in to do that. Um, great student, uh, great athlete, so huge shout out to her. And last but certainly not least, uh, from the first singles position on the girls tennis team, junior Jada Disley. So the, that wraps up your fall 2019 Board of Education Athletic Awards coach. And I believe we still have some, uh, some more. Yeah, so we go into a little bit more exciting is we have uh, some awards and there's more for the year, but for the fall, we have certain awards that are nominated by the coaches. And then we create a pool and then the coaches then review that pool and then vote on those that might be uh, the winners in these things. So we're going to start off with the most improved athletes from our fall season. So um, I guess I'll, I'll read out the, who that were nominated here. Does that sound good here? So we have in football, we have Jason Schules. In field hockey, Caitlin O'Keefe. Volleyball, Ashley Kinnerney. And we have Kevin Martin, right? Riley Mansfield. And then Rachel Kirk for cheerleading. So these are those that are nominated, recognized as most improved throughout their season. So, and our winner is Riley Mansfield, if I'm not mistaken. You're right. It is <laughs> Riley Mansfield. For our most improved in the fall, the winner is Riley Mansfield. Congratulations, Riley. So then we go into uh, the female athletes of the fall, 
And Coach Marley's, why don't you give us those names? So the fall female athletes, we have Alexis Lambertino for girls soccer nominated, Olivia Williams for field hockey, and Sierra James for cross country. And the winner is Olivia Williams. Very good. I waited to see the picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Liv Williams, on fall female athlete. And Coach, take us through the male athlete nominees. For the nominees in the male category, Mike Sowers, Tyler Criswell, Dylan Jess, and Jason Schultz. And the winner is Mike Sowers. Great job, Pete. Say something again yeah, about Mike. Mike um, I mean, o over the past two years, Mike started high school, and we tried to make him a field player, and he played in the field most of the time. And then junior year, we transitioned him full-time to goal, which is not an easy transition. Um, he stepped right up. He is a heck of an athlete. Um, we won the championship last year in large part because of uh, saves he made, um, you know, really standing on his head at times. And then this year, you know, he just carried over again. He was first team all conference. And, um, you know, I think if we would have went a little bit further this year, our record was a little bit stronger. He, he's an all South Jersey caliber goaltender playing in the next, uh, next level. So a lot, a lot of um, praise for him. I can continue talking, but I think we're running a little long already. Great. So those two, the male and the female of the season, will be added to the pool for fail, male and female athlete of the year, which we will see in episode four of our series on varsity awards. Uh, so again, this is the varsity award show. Thank you, coaches and all the coaches that participated in both nominations and uh, providing us the information for this program. Uh, this is episode one, the fall season, and we'll see you again on the next one. And that's a big go nights. Go.